Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm just going over one more example on how to use the method of joints to solve truss problems in statics. So what you're looking at here is our truss. It's made up of straight two force members that are all pin connected. So even though it looks a little bit different than the last video, this is still a truss. Um, you'll notice that the horizontal and the vertical bars are all one meter long. And then the diagonal bars will actually be a little bit longer than a meter. And you'll find out pretty soon that we don't actually even need to know how long they are because Based on this kind of grid pattern that it's making, where all these angles are going to be 45 degrees, and then obviously these ones will be 90. So we'll just be able to roll with those 45 degree angles. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is just draw our free body diagram of the whole structure. And then we'll take the sum of forces in the x direction, the sum of forces in the y direction, and the sum of moments about point A. And that'll give us Fy is 300 newtons up and Ra is 200 newtons up. And then the next thing that we want to do is draw the free body diagram for each joint individually. All right, so now we just want to solve each joint individually as a sort of two-dimensional particle equilibrium. So we just have to pick a joint that has a maximum of two unknowns, and that looks like we can do this with joint A. So we'll just draw the free body diagram for joint A and then sum the forces in the y direction and x direction to get the internal forces in members A, B, and A, C. Okay, so the it looks like the internal force in A, B is negative, so that means that we're actually in compression. And it looks like in A, C, it was a positive value, so that stays in tension. What I like to do is to come back to the original drawing here and uh, just put the proper sense here so that will be in compression. And something else that we can do if we want is we can actually write the, the magnitude. So we would have 280, uh, 282.89 and you'll see why we do this for when we come to analyze point B here. Um, and then in, we can even leave this one down here in tension and just write this as 200. All right, let's move on to analyzing point B. And again, we'll take the sum of forces in the y direction and the sum of forces in the x direction. And we'll see that BC, we actually get 200 newtons and it stays in tension. And BD is 200 newtons, but that's compression. So what we should do is we should again, what I like to do is go back here and change the sense of that. So it's actually going like that. And it's actually pushing on those joints. And then we can come in and write the magnitudes. So 200, and you'll see it'll be easy for this when we come in to do D. And also this guy down here was, BC was also 200. All right, uh, well, let's move on. And we want to take the free body diagram for joint C and then take the sum of forces in the Y direction, sum of forces in the X direction to get these unknown internal forces. So after we just sum these up, we find that we get CD is actually in compression because it's a negative number. And then CE was correctly in tension. So again, let's come in here. Let's fix up our sense for when we carry it through into the next into the next joint. It'll make our lives a little bit easier. And then also just for tracking it, it's helpful for us just to write in the magnitude. So we get uh, 141.4. And then down here for CE, we had 300 newtons. All right, so let's move on now and let's take the free body diagram of joint D here and we will sum up the x and y forces and we'll be able to figure out what the unknowns are. And taking the simple sum in the y and x directions, we find that DE uh, here is 100 newtons tension and then DF is negative 300 newtons, so that's in compression. So again, one last time, or one more time, I guess we come in, we're gonna switch those, put the proper sense on there, and then let's drop in the magnitudes here, so DE where did we have that was uh, DE was 100 newtons and DF we had 300 newtons all right uh, let's move on and go down to joint E here and just do the exact same thing and you'll note that because we only had one unknown here actually because we knew we knew all of these except for EF uh, we only actually had to do one equation so we could have done the sum of forces in X or Y I just chose to do Y um, but then we find out that the tension in here is 424.3 newtons. It's positive, so it is still tension. Um, and then the last thing we can do here is we can just write that in if we want. 424.3. All right. Now, looking at this, something I want to point out is we've actually solved the whole problem at this point. We were asked to solve all of the internal forces uh, in all of the members. And I'll put a green box around all of the ones that we've solved. So we had, well, we even found, if, if, the, if the question asks for the reactions, we did find the reactions. We also found AB here, 
with its magnitude and its sense. Um, I guess you know that's also one of the reactions in there. Uh, we found member AC. We found member BC. You know, uh, we found member BD. What else did we find? We found member CD and CE, and we got all of these guys. So DE tension and then DF compression and then EF. That's the last one. So we've actually solved the whole problem. Um, we, we found all the internal forces, the magnitudes, and the senses. But one thing that we could do that's really helpful, and I, I recommend doing this if you're doing this on a test, is check to make sure that you're right. And the way that we do that is we want to take, we want to do the exact same process here for the last guy. So we're going to isolate uh, joint F here, free body diagram, and we're just going to make sure with the internal forces that we've calculated that this all still nets out to zero. So let's just check that right here. So this last free body diagram, the sum of forces in y direction checks out to be equal to zero, sum of forces in the x direction checks out to be zero, so we know that we've done these correctly, and then we know that we've done actually the whole rest of the problem correctly, and uh, again, the solution to the problem is everything that we had here uh, with a green square around it, which is all of the internal force magnitudes and senses about whether or not they're intention or compression.